Okay. I, I didn't quite finish here, so I'm going to, when you do your tape, pick up the end of this one. <coughs> okay, if we can get started. Is, is there an exam? Just people are just tired? <laughs> Oh, okay. Or, or Monday Night Football. Okay, um, are there any questions before we go on? All right, what I want to talk about then is, is just finish off the discussion of antibiotics and talk a little bit about, about antibiotic uh, resistance. And uh, we'll talk about some of the mechanisms of antibiotic resistance. But before we do that, I just want to make, again, make some general comments about uh, antibiotic resistance. And, and define a couple terms. Um, look, there we go. You know, it's important to keep in mind that there's a difference between clinical resistance and, and actual antibiotic resistance. Clinical resistance occurs whenever you have a situation where the minimal inhibitory concentration of an antibiotic exceeds that which, which you can safely reach in the, in the, in, at the site of an infection in a patient. But just because there is clinical resistance, that doesn't mean that those, those bacteria are actually resistant to that antibiotic. You can always take the, the organism out of the body, out of the patient, and in a test tube, you can probably find a concentration of the antibiotic that can kill that, uh, that organism. But for practical purposes, it doesn't make any difference. What you're really interested in, for, as, as far as treating your patients are concerned, is, is the development of clinical resistance, not actual antibiotic resistance. So there really, really is a difference between the, uh, those, those two uh, terms. And keep in mind that, that resistance to an antibiotic can arise either by mutations, and we'll talk about mutations shortly, uh, or by gene transfer mechanism, and that's going to be the topic of the next lecture as well, gene transfer mechanisms uh, by acquisition of plasmids. Uh, in e either way, you can get antibiotic resistance. Obviously, as we're going to see in the next hour, the gene, gene transfer, by, particularly by plasmids, is a much more efficient way of transferring uh, antibiotic resistance than, than certainly getting them by mutation. Uh, but they can occur by either way. And resistance, of course, once antibiotic resistance gene is a, a, an or organism has an antibiotic resistance gene, the use of those antibiotics is going to provide a selective advantage. Obviously, and if, if you have just even a single bacterium that is resistant to a particular antibiotic, if you use that antibiotic, that particular organism is, is selected for. It is the only one that's going to be able to grow and pop in and in, in continue to grow. So... Um, we get a selective advantage. And, I mean, this is why, you, you know, misuse of antibiotics is such a problem and, and is actually contributing to the resistance problem. I mean, you have patients going ahead and, and not taking their full course of, of, of antibiotics. What that's simply doing is enriching for, for uh, these, these resistant bacteria. In your case, you know, the mother comes in and, and they, they're gonna, they want an antibiotic for their kid that, that's got, they think that's got some bacterial infection when, when probably it's just some viral infection where the antibiotics aren't going to be doing anything. So just misprescribing antibiotics is a problem. Uh, another big issue in this is the, um, the use of antibiotics in animal feed. I mean, the, Poultry workers in the, in, the, in the dairy industry in this, they like to supplement their animal, their animal feed with antibiotics because it keeps infections down in their crops. But the problem is, is that contributes to antibiotic resistance. There was a, there was a neat study that was done in, in Denmark where a whole area of the country did an experiment where basically they stopped feeding antibiotics to their livestock. And then they monitored patients for the presence of antibiotic resistant bacteria. And what they found is as soon as they stopped using antibiotics in the, in the, in the animals, antibiotic resistance in, in, in amongst humans dropped drastically. If you, when you start it again, antibiotic resistance goes up. So this is a real problem. Um, now, also keep in mind that resistance can come either in a single step, it, 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 a mutation occurs or, you, or the, a, some gene transfer mechanism occurs where suddenly the, the, the organism now becomes resistant. But it's also not uncommon for resistance to develop very slowly. You're treating, you know, you have patients that, that are coming down with a particular infection, so you, you're treating with a certain 
dose of antibiotic, and it seems to be effective. And then after a while, it's, it's no longer effective. So you boost up the, the dosage that you give, and that works for a while, and then it's, again, it, it's not effective. And you keep boosting up the dosage, and so very, very slowly. And eventually, you reach this point where clinical resistance is achieved, and then the, the antibiotic is just no longer uh, useful. <laughs> now, there's a couple terms that are used to refer to situations where organisms are resistant to multiple antibiotics. Uh, and there's a difference between what they, what they actually are. And they're, the, the terms are cross-resistance and, and multiple resistance. In cross-resistance, the organisms are resistant to a lot of antibiotics, but it's as a consequence of a single event. A single mechanism is involved. Uh, you typically see this in, in amongst antibiotics that are closely related. Uh, so, for example, a, a bacterium becomes resistant to streptomycin, one of the aminoglycosides, and simultaneously becomes resistant to all the aminoglycosides. All right, so a single event occurs, confers resistance to a multiple organisms, a multiple antibiotics, but it's all by the same mechanism, basically. In contrast, the term multiple resistance is used to describe a situation where you get resistance to a lot of different antibiotics, but each the resistance to each antibiotic is mediated by some different mechanism. And you see this, obviously, in most commonly in unrelated antibiotics. So you have an organism that gets resistant to tetracycline and aminoglycosides and erythromycin and so on. This type of resistance is very often mediated by uh, plasmid or gene transfer mechanisms that we'll talk about. All right, so what are some of those mechanisms? How do bacteria become resistant to an antibiotic? One is by altered permeability. Dr. Fox pointed out when he talked, discussed the gram negatives, he said that, that gram negatives, because of that outer membrane, are inherently much more resistant to, to things because, simply because uh, materials don't pass through that, uh, that outer membrane very effectively. That outer membrane is a good permeability barrier. So obviously anything that can't get into, the, if an antibiotic can't get in, it's not going to be effective, okay? Uh, so any, anything that prevents it coming in will, will result in resistance. So any mutation or, or the event that occurs that changes the, the outer membrane in some way that the antibiotic can't get in is, is one of these mechanisms. And here's a little movie. Here, here we have the the uh, transport of proporins where this is going to come in. The antibiotic tries to get through and, and because of the altered transport protein can't get in either through the inner outer membrane or the inner membrane for that matter. It doesn't make any difference. Obviously then they are, the organism is going to be resistant. Okay. But it's altered permeability is also can be altered efflux. And the classic example of this is tetracycline resistance. Tetracycline resistance is, is a consequence of the fact that there's a transporter protein that's produced that actively transports tetracycline out of the cell. So tetracycline actually gets in, but then is immediately pumped out of the cell. So we have a situation like this. The tetracycline is, comes into the cell you have got to go through and get all this labeling. But it's going to come into the cell normally. But the resistance gene is one that codes for a transporter that will appear here shortly. There's a, a, a transporter that actually, this is what the resistance gene is coded for, this transporter, then it very effectively just pumps the tetracycline right out of the cell. Okay, so it never gets to its target, which is what? The 30S ribosome, okay? <laughs> All right. Does that work for like the other, um, like the class Yeah, usually these things will work for, for those related antibiotics as well, okay? All right. The, 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 the second mechanism that, that, uh, by which bacteria can become, become resistant is inactivation of the antibiotic. And you've seen some examples of this. Dr. Fox talked to you about the beta-lactamase that destroys the, the beta-lactam ring on those, those beta-lactam antibiotics. So destroying the antibiotic in some way. But there are other examples of this. Uh, Chloramphenicol resistance is a consequence of, of a bacteria getting a gene for a, a, a chloramphenicol acetyltransferase. And what this does is it, it, it uh, acylates chloramphenicol. It acts on the antibiotic, acylating the the um, 
the antibiotic, the antibiotic can't bind, okay? So here we have a situation where the organism, the resistance gene codes for something that detoxifies the antibiotic. And many times these things are secreted and so that they're just destroyed before it comes in, or it can be actually, the bacteria, can, the, the antibiotic can come into the cell and then be destroyed within the cell. Either way will work, uh, result in the same thing. The third way that antibiotics, the resistance develops to antibiotic, is alteration in the target site. And again, you've heard some examples of this already. Those penicillin binding proteins, remember those were the things that were involved in, in the biosynthesis of, of peptidoglycan, and those are the things that bind penicillin. Well, an alteration in one of those penicillin binding proteins so that it is unable to bind penicillin anymore will result in resistance to penicillin, so altering the target site. You see the same thing for RNA polymerases. Uh, that the uh, DNA-dependent RNA polymerase and resistance to rifampicin, what happens there is you get, you get, a, you get a mutation or some, effect, some change in the, um, the RNA polymerase so that it can't bind rifampicin anymore, and then it becomes resistant. Those that bind to the ribosomes, like streptomycin, targets the 30S ribosome. A mutation that results in a change in the 30S ribosome prevents streptomycin from binding. So here we have the ribosome. Uh, in normal binding site, but it gets altered. Obviously, the antibiotic, if it gets into the cell, can't interact with its target, okay? And it results in resistance. So there are, there are many examples of this type of uh, altering the target site. And the, the, the last way is replacement of a sensitive pathway. And this is really, this is sort of like, a, actually than being, rather than being a fourth different way, it, it's probably a, a, an offshoot of the altered target site. And what I mean by that, and you, you see this pre predominantly in the sulfonamides and, and, and trimethoprim. What happens here is that this is typically plasmid mediated. The, the organism, the bacteria get, gets a plasmid that carries resistance genes on it. So these organisms actually then have one form of the enzyme that is sensitive to the antibiotic and another form of the, of the enzyme, for example, the dihydrofolate reductase, that is resistant to the enzyme. Well, if you have both of those things, which one would be dominant? Resistance is going to be dominant in that case, and so these would become these organisms would become resistant. So you basically you replace what happens in this in this type of resistance. You're, you're replacing you get a plasmid that essentially replaces that whole pathway with resistant uh, um, enzymes. Okay. <coughs> All 